Cheap, accurate, and Shimano Rode Groupset compatible, testing this power meter over the last few months has been quite the surprise. The power meter in question is the new P505 base from Machine. Now the base sits just below their P505 spider base power meter. Now I say just below because the technical specifications on the P505 base very, very closely match the P505, with the base having a claimed accuracy of plus or minus 1.5%, and the new claimed accuracy on the P505 is now plus or minus 1%. Now the P505 base ships with a crankset, comes in five different lengths from 165 all the way up to 175, four bolt 110BCD, and the killer feature for this, that's a 24 mil Shimano compatible spindle. Meaning if you've got a Shimano Rogue group set, this is a very, very easy swap out and swap in to get yourself power. The PES crank arm and P505 base power meter doesn't ship with any chain rings. You can choose to bundle those in if you wish. Machine have some 12 speed chain rings you can choose from. What I've chosen to do is install my 11 speed Shimano chain rings on my test bike, which have worked flawlessly with this setup. A quick skip through the technical specifications of this crank and crank arm. The Spider 4 bolt 110 BCD PES crank comes in five lengths, 165 through 175. Q factor 147 mil, so standard road Q factor. Wireless connectivity to the power meter amp plus and Bluetooth, you'll get power, cadence, balance, and pedal smoothness. The balance side of things, again, is just an estimate, being a spider power meter, not knowing exactly what left and what right is. Power meter accuracy claims plus or minus 1.5%, 2500 watts if you can do those, up to 200 RPM, manual zero or back pedal zero. It does have active temperature compensation. Internal battery, which is USB rechargeable, they claim here up to 200 hours. In the last two months of testing this meter, I haven't needed to recharge this meter, so it's holding charge quite well. IPX7 waterproofing, activation system management firmware upgrades all via the Machine app on iOS or Android. Power scaling, you can go plus or minus 10% to line things up if required. I've left mine on 100, it's working fine. When it comes to the weight, depends on which crank set length you're using. My setup weighed in at 782 grams. That's with a 172.5 and a 5236 Shimano ring setup. And when it comes to pricing, well, it depends. Here in Australia, the PES crank with the P505 base power meter, so the crank set and the power meter with no rings, comes in at 629 Aussie dollars. I recommend jumping on Google and searching for your local resellers or distributors for your local pricing. Installation, very straightforward. Single bolt on the non-drive side with a big M20 fixing bolt. That's secured in place just fine after a number of rides and a number of very, very hard sprints. Activation of the meter is done via the Machine app and once configured, you are right to go. The defaults are just fine. So I've been test riding this power meter since mid-July, so around two months now, and the data has been good. Very, very good. Exceeding all of my expectations for a budget level power meter, both indoors and out. And speaking of the data, here we are on my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how things stack up. Llama lab test, first up to have a look at here. We have the Doretto XR, Asioma Duos, and the Machine P505 base. Warm-up protocol performed into the 200 and 250 watt steady state. We'll grab that there. And 223, 224, 223.6. <laughs> look, that's... Uh, that's almost unbelievable from a budget power meter. That's stacking up really, really nicely. No smoothing on screen there, so it does look a little jagged. That's the reality of what's happening on a per second basis, but that's looking really good. Uh, two sprints performed uh, right here. First sprint, the trainer just taking an extra second to come up to speed before I was already spinning out, but look, what have we got here? We have the Asioma Duos 1102 and the P505 base uh, 1097. Super close for those two on bike meters. A little further down the road, the virtual road, another very short sprint here. And that's pretty close given how short that sprint was and the recording into the one second. So pretty good in the sprints. What I'm looking for in the sprints is 150, 200, 300 watts out. They were looking pretty good. Into the overs and unders. So erg response time, more of a trainer test than anything, but it also keeps power meters honest. Overs and unders here, all looking really great. That erg punch when the trainer first changes is uh, spiking up here. And look, this data point right here. So the Favero Asiomas and the Machines right there within two watts at 517 um, before it then stabilizes at the 450 zone. Looking really good. Um, flywheel speed test, again, this is more of a trainer test, but uh, the two on-bike power meters ticking along just nicely, just nicely. And here is where we bend space time with extremely high flywheel speeds. We don't expect the trainers to perform very well here, but what we are seeing is two power meters being very, very close there on the bike. Small rampy, 
into some just riding along. Um, response time here is good. Bit of a gear change here. Other than that, uh, all looking good indoors. Outdoors and the last data set that we'll look at, only two today to keep things short. 179 average, 179 average up against the Asiama duos with two sprints involved. Jump into this section through here, has some overs and unders, uh, 240 versus 238.8, some stop starts. There a bit of shadowing with the data on screen given it's uh, the recording interval is just one hertz. First sprint, very short. The Asiama duos grabbed that straight away. I think I ran out of gears very, very quickly. So there's only one like spike other point from there. Horrible sprint. I'll take that on the chin and do another one right here. Looking a lot better. Both within 32 watts of each other for that one single data point. Again, no major separations, no complete wonkiness. Um, that's looking pretty good. Into a little rampy and just riding home with some stop starts. 214.6, 217, very, very close there. So within just over two watts. Look, it's, uh, it's very, very close. Look, we're not seeing any separations, any trends. With the temperature changes while riding along, uh, no issues there. Um, and riding home for the last four minutes of the ride, 226 versus 227 with some stop starts. Things looking great. Jumping out of the cadence, and there only is one thing I can really pick out from this meter, but overall it doesn't really matter. So at the end of the ride here, the last 12 minutes or so, 83, 83 RPM. The machine just a little bit spiky. Just here, 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 and here. Nothing that I noticed on the bike, to be honest. Again, starting off here and here. Uh, possibly gear changes and that being a little unsmooth there. But without correct cadence, it can't give you correct power. The power looks pretty good, so not a major issue there with cadence. Maybe something they could tweak in later firmwares on the P505 base. But just, uh, well, look, I can't sing the praises of this meter all the way along. There's got to be something I need to pick out. And that's pretty much the only thing I can find. The mean max graph, as we expect, pretty smooth all the way through the ride outdoors. And the overall stats there from the two power meters. Now, give or take these with a grain of salt because two different recording devices, two different power meters, etc. But overall, it can give us a good indication of where things are at. 179, 179, 270, 270 for normalized and max power there within five watts. So in summary, those numbers there with the P505 base up against the well-trusted and well-proven Asuma duos, doing very, very well for a budget power meter. So there's no question about it, the data coming from the P505 base exceeded all of my expectations, doing very, very well up against some known good quality power meters there, both indoors and out. Now I think there's two killer features of this power meter, one being the price, two being the 24 mil spindle, meaning that anybody with a Shimano Rode group set can simply take their crank off, install one of these with the same rings they've been using in the past, and away you go. You've got power that, as we saw in the numbers, is pretty good. So this would be a great option for maybe a first power meter, power meter for your second bike, power meter for an indoor bike only maybe. Now I've said in the past, spider-based power meters are a bit like Lego, where you've got to build something from here and here and here and maybe swap a bottom bracket out. With this being 24 mil compatible, a lot of that complexity has been taken away. And at this price point, a lot of the pain has been taken away too from this power meter. Now, one thing I didn't try was installing Shimano 12 speed chain rings on this chain set. I was using the 11 speed on an 11 speed group set. The machine chain rings themselves are marked as 12 speed, so I'm sure they'll work, but do watch this space if I get around to installing some Shimano chain rings on this crank set for further testing. Keep an eye on this channel or maybe in the comments below. Now what I'd love to see from here is a GRX version of this crank set from Machine. A little bit wider Q factor, something we can put on our gravel bikes with a GRX setup. And if the numbers are good, as we've seen with the uh, testing I've done so far, I think it would be a winner. But I do admit that wish is a little self-serving as I've just got myself a new gravel bike with GRX on it and I'm looking for spider base power meters for that. Anyhow, we'll wrap it up here for today. There's a quick look at the P505 base from Machine a power meter that does exceed my expectations and performs very, very well. I'll put links in the video description below where you can find these and find more information if you're after it. And if you've enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, and thanks for watching.